Well, welcome to Conversations with Visionaries, and I'm your co-host, Philip Porter. And Dr. Janice Porter, welcome. And we like to say uh, Conversations with Visionaries, where you learn more, lead more, and succeed more. And the Conversations with Visionaries is sponsored by the Vision Driven Family Institute in McKinney, Texas, where achieving family success your way is their mission. Mm-hmm. The music that you hear is by Sebastian Sounds out of Richmond, Virginia. And as everyone knows, we like to start the broadcast with a quote. And Dr. Porter, can you tell them what the quote for today is? I sure can. Our quote for today says, God gave you a gift of 84,600 seconds today. Have you used one of them to say thank you? And that's by William Arthur Ward. All yeah. right, great quote. Uh, we'd be glad to be back in uh, Texas. Yes. Uh, our last broadcast, thank you for everyone who watched because we was in the great city of Jackson, Mississippi. Woo-hoo. And actually on the campus of Jackson State University. Yeah. Yeah. And we're interviewing the legendary Dr. Hilliard Lackett. So it was a great interview. If you haven't seen that, you can uh, go back to our Facebook page and check it out because you might learn a few things about life, even about sharecropping. Mm -hmm. So very, uh, very exciting interview. Uh, But for today, we're ready to roll. We got a special guest, Juliet Mitchell, life etiquette expert. And we're going to have some special announcements at the end. In regards to the Vision Driven Family Institute, another announcement is regards to the HBCU Football Classic Game of the Week. And then just kind of share a national family-related holiday. Mm -hmm. And with that said, we are looking forward to a great show with our special guest, Juliet Mitchell, and we will see if we can bring her on at this particular time. Let's see if it does, if you can come on up. Oh, all right. Hello. 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 Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome. Thank you. Right. Actually, well, I'm going to start by saying thank you. Thank you for that, Miss Janice, that quote. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. We are so excited to have Miss Juliet Mitchell as our honored guest. We really, really are. And so I, I have the pleasure, and it truly is a pleasure to just say a few words to introduce her to our guest. Uh, Miss Juliet, professionally, she is professionally known as Miss Jane, the life etiquette expert. Yes, She's yes, a yes. master etiquette trainer and business <laughs> coach with clients all around the globe. She has over 22 years of serving diverse audience from young children to experienced professionals. Ms. J's areas of expertise include business and social etiquette and career development. All right. As as a long-standing graduate of the prestigious Emily Post Business Etiquette Institute. Okay. Ms. J has created an etiquette training series called social education and life etiquette. Right. It's the teaching on how to be in any situation, how to be in any situation. Uh, You'll hear more about that from her. She's also, she's also a newspaper life etiquette columnist. Okay. Wow. So wherever her services are offered, Ms. J shares practical tips, strategies, and techniques for career and life success. And I got to say this last part because I'm a Southern girl too. I love it. <laughs> I might spend some of It says, a self-professed grits, grits, G-R-I-T-S, girl raised in the South. Woohoo! I love it. Oh, all right. She now. energizes <laughs> and forms crowds with her intellect, her humor, and Southern Miss J persona. All right. After taking part in one of Miss J's individualized coaching sessions, mm-hmm. she offered that as well. Seminars, workshops, okay. are being present at one of her keynote speeches. You will be better prepared to handle any business or social interaction <laughs> with poise and confidence and yeah. in the most appropriate manner. 
Welcome to our show, Ms. J. Oh, well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. <laughs> We're so excited to have you. All right. And that. Juliet, where are you at now? Because we're in Texas and you are in. I'm in St. Paul, Minnesota. Oh, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. We, we miss you guys on this end of the world, but I understand <laughs> you're in warm country now. Uh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, well, we're excited to have you. And let me uh, maybe let me get the first question okay. in. Okay. Okay. All right. And that question is, who is Juliet Mitchell? Like, Where was you born and raised? Just to tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. who's Juliet. All right. Well, as Miss Janice just said, I'm a girl raised in the South. I'm from Louisiana, small town called Keithville, Louisiana. I think I got some home people watching this today. So okay. hi, everybody. And uh, that's near Shreveport, if you've never heard of Keithville before. My okay. education and uh, my elementary, high school, and first level college was in Louisiana. I'm a graduate of Southern University. And that was my alma mater for my first degree. And um, come from a huge Southern family, five brothers, four sisters, mom okay. and dad, and a host of relatives and friends. Yes, yes. <laughs> Love it. Oh, Love it. Love right. It. Love well, it. how did you get from Louisiana yes. to Minnesota? How yeah, did that's a story. <laughs> <laughs> I, was with the, um, I was with the airline industry in Houston and just oh, going right. through some life changes. One of my, I guess, criteria for moving was that I could remain with the airline industry. Okay. Northwest Airlines was looking for me and I was looking to move and it was a good marriage. They moved me to Minnesota and here I am. I didn't think I was going to stay this long, but I'm still here. <laughs> we understand that, Julia. <laughs> oh, yeah. I moved in 1991, which was the year of the big blizzard. And I said, when right. it melts, I'm going south. I'm still yeah. here. <laughs> Wow. Um, well, I'm sure that was a very dramatic and cultural. Uh, it, it was. I got up. used to it. Learned how to drive oh, yes. in the snow, so I'm good to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All great, right. great. Well, Julia, you have a wonderful career, a wonderful, uh, you offer such wonderful services. Was there a particular person who inspired you or, or an event that inspired you? Or maybe who inspired I guess it you? It was really over a period of time when I was went into management and part of my job was hiring people mm -hmm. and people would come to the interview and I'm saying, who, who prepared these people to come? It was more yeah. behaviorally based. You mm -hmm. get a person who had a good le looking resume, then they come inappropriately dressed. They'd mm -hmm. come looking like a fashion plate, but they didn't have the skills. So etiquette is more than about this, the small, uh, place of being at the table. It's about life. And that's how I came up with life etiquette. It's how to be. So mm -hmm. I figured if I could get to people and teach them how to be before they get to the chair, then that would improve their chances of success on the job. Nice. So that's, that's how it, it kept evolving. I didn't start out doing it. It came over time. Okay. okay. Yes. 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 Okay. And then as a business owner, what has been your greatest challenge? Wow. Greatest challenge. There are a lot of challenges when you're a business owner. Um, what, one of the greatest challenges, I think, is balance. And balance falls into several categories. That's balancing your your home and family life, your friendships, yes. your self-care. So all of that. And then it's the balance of your finances and the balance of your energy. All of that kind of interplay it at once and how do I do it all and get it all done within the 24 hours or how many seconds you said we had? <laughs> 600. Okay. No, okay. Trying yeah. to do it all and get some rest. So balance is a is a big key, I think, mm -hmm. to success. Mm -hmm. Good point. Good point. Well how long have you been in business? 
How long have you been in business? Seems like all my life. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> formally, um, and, and Philip, you may recall because you worked for the agency in St. Paul called NDC, the Neighborhood right. Development uh, Center. So I, right. I took a uh, small business training when I was still working corporate. And that was, okay. wow, that was over uh, 25, 30 years ago. But okay. I was still working full time and thought, what do I do with this? It was, the focus was more on customer service at that time when I first started out. Okay. Propel some years into the future, 9-11 happened. And oh. yeah, yeah, and then I, I my position ended with the airline industry. But all that time I was kind of building and thinking about what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Well, um, God, made that decision for me okay. because, <laughs> because my job ended. And I, I choose to say that God changed my direction in life. So sure. my, my, my child grew up that year, you know, that declaration, I'm 18, I'm grown. See you later. Okay. And okay. so it's like, no, I don't have a child to take care of. I don't have a job. So if I'm going to do the business, th now is the time to do it. So okay. that's how I started. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, that's a good uh, tip and good suggestions for people who's looking at going into business. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't ran a business before, mm -hmm. it is okay to take some classes or take some workshops so you can really get an understanding of what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. You definitely should take some classes and workshops. And there are so many. And, and Philip, again, you know, we were very fortunate with mm -hmm. NBC because the, the cost was either very little comparative to going to a whole big course or right. it was uh affordable to the people so because it was a community based so you got right. to work with people who had a vested interest in you making it in the community so yeah. that's what i really appreciated and it was at a pace that if you were a working person already in business that you could pace yourself through that training okay yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Good suggestion for anybody who's looking at starting a business or like I tell people, even if you have a business mm -hmm. and actually never taken yeah. classes on actually how to formally yes. run a business mm -hmm. with operations or marketing is good to get that education. All right. You should it definitely never is. stop learning. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I, I tell people all the time, especially young people who think, oh, I finished high school. I'm done. Oh, I finished college. I'm done. As long as there is a world that's going to be opportunities to learn because things change so mm -hmm. much. And it doesn't matter your profession or business. There will be changing. Look how technology has changed over the years. Uh, the food industry has changed a lot. Everything is steadily in evolving and mm -hmm. we have to grow and change with it. Well, we don't have to, but if we yeah. don't, we're going to remain stagnant and may not succeed because we didn't right. grow. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. That is right. Well, Julie, I have a, a question. Yes. You know, you know, when I worked at NDC as a trainer, as you know, and I've mm -hmm. met hundreds Hundred, literally hundreds of businesses. Mm -hmm. Okay, you are the only <laughs> person that I know, irregardless of background, color, mm -hmm. or anything, that's in the etiquette industry. That's yes. what you would call it. Yes. So yeah, I had always wondered. I know you kind of shared with me how you got in, but are there very many people of color in the industry? And you know, how does somebody make money? It's just like every, what I tell people what I do is like, oh, we need it in schools, oh, we need it over here, and oh, we need it over here. But one of the challenges is that it's gonna cost you, you know, right. it, it is a business and it's training. And again, I said that I am a graduate of the Emily Post Business Etiquette Institute. So okay. there are others of us out there. And okay. actually one reason I, I was so excited to go to the Institute was because I wanted to be around people who had the same shared uh, passion that I do for etiquette. And I found that. And actually we are still connected today through that experience, through that training. So okay. people come to the okay. Institute from all over the world. We had people from really? South America, as far away as uh, Nigeria. We Whoa. were all there at the same time. So people, we're, we're out there. Mm -hmm. It may look a little yeah. different and people may call it something a little bit different, mm -hmm. uh, like civility training. You, I see soft skills training in the back. It kind of falls under that umbrella as well. Right. So it That's depends cool. on how you frame that. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Wow. So the school, where is it located? The, the school that you went to, where is it located? It's located in Burlington, Vermont. So oh. I tell people that there were two things I did in life that were, were pivotal to, to me. One was the Dale Carnegie Institute training years ago when I first started out in corporate. That was in Houston like a week or so long training that was just entrenched in those principles, which I still use today. And okay. then the, the Etiquette Institute in Vermont, again, very intense week long, that was just all packed in there, but we were so excited to be there and be with each, with each other. It kept your energy up and kept you going. And then okay. as a licensed professional, you get to coach with them. So if I run into things today that are a challenge for me, I will call them and say, hey, what do you think about this? What are you telling people in the, okay. in the etiquette arena? Okay. Well, that's a nice support system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really you need up. support. That actually is one of the tips I was going to talk about as far as um, what helps you to keep going is having that support system, that that A team because you're going to need that because people will pull your energy or you pull in so many direction. Who's really there to support you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Wow. Wow. Dennis? Well, yeah. let's see what else was another question we want to have. I think I asked the challenge, but since there's so many benefits of the, for the field that you're in, what are some of the benefits you would like to share with our audience? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, some of the benefits is the freedom to choose and the freedom to chart your day, which mm -hmm. means you have to have some discipline as well. And yeah. people feel, and you guys may run into this as well. Oh, you run your own business. You can do what you want to do. Well, you can. <laughs> there's there's going to be a price to pay for it. But I yeah. know that I worked hard in corporate. I probably work harder for myself, but it's that passion for your work that sure. keeps yes. going. So you get to choose. If I choose mm -hmm. that I want to get up and go to a movie at nine o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. I can do that. But mm -hmm. I also am disciplined enough to know that I got to put some hours behind the scenes that no one really knows about. That's, That's, right. Right. That's right. correct. Yes. Yes. And, yes. Exactly. Some yes. other things that are, are benefits is you can be as creative as you want to be. You can try some things and you may have to bump your head a few times. Oh, that didn't work. But <laughs> you, you have that. You won't get fired. If you yeah, try right. to, okay. it doesn't work. Right. Then you may, again, you may have to make up for that some way or try something different or use a sounding board. But having that creativity is important. Being able to chart your day and um, just meeting other people in, in the network. It gives you that freedom and that camaraderie is that I'm not here alone because that's important to know yes. that you have some help out there. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's wow. exactly right. Well, share, can you share some of the things that you've actually done? For example, yeah. because I work at NDC, I know you was actually the MC of one of NDC's uh, annual galas and mm -hmm. fundraising yes. event, uh -huh. Uh -huh. which, uh, you know, I, it was quite appropriate. You did an outstanding did. job. You did an excellent job. Well, well thank you. <laughs> Some people ask me, do you speak a foreign language? I said, no, but I went to everyone on, on that list of nominees so that okay. I could share the name of their names and the name of their business with yeah. the, in the language that it mm -hmm. is. And so that was part of what I did to make that more uh, honorable of those people of the contestants. Yes. Well, see, that was is quite impressive because you went the extra mile. Mm -hmm. But see, that extra is what's valuable, mm -hmm. especially yeah. when you know the various people from different cultures and their names are sometimes hard pronounced, and sometimes we uh, you know take it for granted or we don't uh, highlight it or make it attention. An intentional exactly, effort, exactly. Right, to actually respect them, to say their name and say their business correctly. Yes. Well, and that's part of etiquette. Again, it's, it's okay. honoring and respecting yourself, other people in the world around you. So that to me was part of that commitment. Once I said I would do it, mm -hmm. I wanted to do it the best. Again, that honors all the honorees so that people will remember them. They will know their name and they will hear it said in such a way that again, uh, respects and honor them. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. All right, can you share a few other uh, projects or a few other services and events that you've actually done that you can share with, uh, share with us? Okay, well, one of the 
biggest as far as volume uh, speeches that I ever did was the commencement address for National American University. I actually that teaching assignment, yeah, the teaching assignment and the etiquette work came right close together. When I went to the Institute was the year that I started teaching. And it was such a great connection because one of the main classes was career and college success and career management. So that just gave me more meat behind the work that I was already doing. So oh, preparing wow. to the future about, I think five or six years later, they asked if I would do the commencement address. And I was like, wow. Oh. I, wow. it was an honor and I did feel comfortable doing it. But then I asked, why me? Because Anne Bancroft has been one of those people and other people who are more say world renowned. Okay. And I said, well, why did you choose me? And one of the reasons was the way that I run my classroom, the way oh, that I honor the okay. students. I know the students okay. at a higher standard. I said, if if this is a career college and you're supposed to be career ready when you graduate, yeah. then I would do you a disservice if I allow you to be anyway in my class. So when wow. you come into my class, you were to come in professional. If you need to make a phone call, you can make that call, but you have to leave the classroom. And guess what? There was no cussing and swearing in my class. <laughs> no. I, that, that, may, that may seem like a no-brainer, but yeah, I told yeah, the other yeah. students and I said, your professor let you do that in class? They said, yeah, they, they let us do anything. Is and that I, right? Not in this class. So I have a very good relationship with the students, actually still stay in contact with them now. So they asked wow. me if I would do the commencement address. And my the the focus of that address was that we need you. We need those students with who are smart, um, high energy, good health, mental, physical, whatever, to do the work. And we need them to be loving human beings because they truly are the future. As much yeah. as a cliche as it sounds, it's true. I say, I'm getting older, so I do this for selfish reasons because I'm gonna need you nurses to take care of me. And I want someone who's smart, capable, and, and a loving human being. Those wow. who are going to be in education, I say, I have a granddaughter coming up. I want teachers to be smart, loving, capable human beings. So if we can pour into you and give you our best, then you can be our best, your best as well. So that was the focus of that that speech. Wow. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Outstanding. Yes. 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 <laughs> and so, uh, Philip, some a couple of other things that I do. Mm -hmm. If you look at my profile, I there my clients or participants are, are like the five C's: children okay. and, and youth. It could be a children and youth program. So I do some work at some schools here. Uh, I would like to stretch out over the country with going to different elementary or high schools, college and universities. That's that's my sweet spot. I really love uh, oh, that okay. audience. Some corporate clients, that's a kind of growing edge. Corrections is actually where my first major etiquette gig started. What? Yeah, yes, at, at a correctional oh, facility. Yeah. So someone called someone, again, having good reputation because your manners are memorable. So people <laughs> said, we need someone who teach etiquette. Do you know anyone? That person introduced me to the captain of that um, that jail went in and did a presentation. He said, we're going to pilot this. So we piloted the um, the etiquette session. It was called social etiquette. And at the end, one of the participants, because they're not inmates, they're uh -huh. participants when they're in my class. Uh -huh. okay. Miss Mitchell, you ought to call this life etiquette. And I said, I like it. Can I use it? He said, yeah, I can use it. So that's how the social education, the teaching, uh -huh. and the life etiquette on how to be in life. Oh, nice. So it's beyond the dining table. So that's the work that started that curriculum that's developed now. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> I never told you that before. <laughs> that's well, how I guess about the etiquette industry would lead you there. Well, right? Who knew? But all kind of doors because it's life etiquette. Wherever you go, people need to know how to be. And in mm -hmm. this high tech world, which I love technology, not my strong suit, but I love what it does. But we also know and studies have proven that our social interaction, especially amongst our young people, is kind of at an all time low. Mm -hmm. The network is there. 
uh, with technology, but the face-to-face -face interaction and how to be and how to have a conversation and how to present yourself is at a low. And you know, anxiety yeah. is up. So along with that, it's like, oh, now I'm anxious because I don't know how to be in life. That's mm -hmm. where I come in and help those persons do that. Whether it's individual coaching or coming in and doing a workshop or the full Selly series. And I call it Selly, Social Education and Life Etiquette. Oh, yeah, I want to okay. hear how she pronounced that. That's yeah. what it's Some mean. people say silly, but we, we yeah. settle on Selly. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nice, nice, nice. Wow, that's outstanding. Well, I'm gonna go to the other street because you yeah. was telling me about a tea. I was going, yeah, a tea party or tea something. Tea I mean, girl, yeah. you know, because now you're talking about inmates, and I knew about the tea party. I'm talking about your ranges. <laughs> well, let me tell you how I'm able to do that. First of all, I don't do all the work by myself. I do have uh, some associates that I do work with. However, you remember I told you about that nine brothers and sisters that I had and a host yeah. of brothers and friends? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, I was raised in this community where we had these generations. There are some people that never see grandparents or great grandparents in today's culture, right? Okay. Well, okay. at that time, you had infancy all the way up to 80 or 90 years old. So mm -hmm. I had a way of being even then that my family had maybe had the haves and the have nots. And some people didn't want to be with these over here. But I was always able to go in between those groups and be comfortable and confident in that. So wow. propel that to my life today. I still can go into a room. I call my princess group. That's for the tea party. Okay. And then I can go into a room with corporate executives and still be comfortable. There's still people at the wow. end of the day. And my philosophy is, or at least my promise is, whether you're two or 102, we treat everyone with dignity and respect. Wow. Yes. Wow. That's oh, outstanding. Yes. Well, how did yeah. the, the tea party, how did that get started? Oh, wow. Well, well it got started because a lot of people would tell me, man, I never did this when I was little. I've No one ever taught me how to say hello or to introduce myself. So my thinking is if we can get to the little ones and start building their confidence and self-esteem, then mm -hmm. when they get over here, they, they won't need it. So mm -hmm. I find so many high school and college students and, and even first le level professionals who never had those lessons. How they got that far without those lessons, I don't know. But I wow. figured... I can work on both ends. So the tea party was for those young girls to have those first lessons. So now I call it a princess tea party and table manners. So it's, it's, it's not just about tea. It's learning mm -hmm. those early life lessons, those manners in a fun and engaging way where they can dress up and be served tea and, and delicious food and learn all at the same time. Wow. Wonderful. So it's it's wow. grown. I, I started eight years ago when my granddaughter was moving. She was three years old. And I said, we have to mark the occasion with something. So we okay. decided to have tea. Seven mm -hmm. girls and a couple of friends and me in my living room. It has grown to tw almost 25 girls and their significant adult. So wow. this year's tea party really hosted about 50 people. Is so, that right? Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's a lot of fun. It takes a lot of volunteers and a lot of people to make this Princess Tea Party. So you'll see some of the pictures on, um, I think I've put some on Facebook and on LinkedIn, what okay. the room looked like. People came together to do this for these little girls. And now when they see me in the community or they see the other ladies, they will say hi and introduce themselves. And so it's just wonderful to see their growth. And wow. to show you when you make that investment, how you get the return. The ones who are 12, 11, 12, and 13 now, they want to come back and volunteer. So some of our volunteers nice. were the ladies who had been through it three, four years ago. Nice. Wow. <laughs> that has yeah. to be a wonderful feeling to be doing pretty that. awesome. If anybody want to help for 2020, we're already <laughs> planning. <laughs> we're already planning. There's a big shout out. There's a big shout out for that. Shout out for Princess Tea Party and Table Manners 2020. You have your day set already? <laughs> it is the first Sunday in August. I haven't uh, firmed the date up. Whatever that first Sunday in August, that's the date. So I will I will firm that up. 
nice, wow. nice, nice. Wow. That's, That's great. Awesome. That's, That's great, awesome. great, great, great. All right. Well, any other, uh, you know, can you kind of just kind of summarize the various services that you yes. offer and that you provide for uh, for the community? Oh, sure. So um, within the context, so the whole Selly package is a series of 16 hour course, so to speak. And sometimes oh, wow. that, that could be done. I prefer it done over like a four week period twice a week so you can deepen that learning. But it could be done as a package in one or two days and you take it back. Uh, in in, in trench. And I built it in such a way that workshops, individual workshops could be done. So we go from the handshake to the dining table and all of those things in between. What has to happen from the time that you meet a person to the time that you invite them to dinner? You got to learn how to talk, how to dress, how to interact with conversation, how to handle difficult situations and how to present yourself. Then you're ready for the table. So that's the 16 hour curriculum. And then within that, Two of the most popular ones for seminars now is civility in the workplace. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. You can pay for an etiquette training with, for Ms. J or you can pay for a lawsuit later. Because <laughs> if, you, if you don't treat people well, it yeah. can be so contentious that it results in a lawsuit. But sure. if you uh, employ some of the life etiquette skills, respect and honor and consideration for other people, you right. will get there. So yeah. that's what I do in the uh, in the realm of civility. And the other one that's really, really popular among college students is networking combined with the dining etiquette. Again, we're in a very, very casual world. Matter of yeah. fact, there was a, a school in Mississippi, a school district, that they noticed that the kids weren't eating the food. And they were like, why are the kids eating the food? They didn't know how to use instruments. So they were just throwing food away. Everything was in a uh, a wrap, a nugget, a ball, even cereal is in a bar. So they didn't know how to use the instruments and they weren't eating. Uh, So they started having a dining etiquette class with these schools in Mississippi. And these weren't the poor urban kids. These were mainstream suburban kids. They they eat the same thing as everyone else. So they didn't have the schools. Yeah. Is that right? That is right. That's a say. If you look it up, there's there's an article on it. I wish I could cite it right now, but I can't. But that kind of firmed up. Yes, we do need this. Our kids need social skills, and if they if they're socialized early, that is going to increase their opportunities because they're going to be invited to the table. Mm-hmm. You know, the the yeah. bad kid or the crazy uncle that you want to invite because he don't know how to act because mm-hmm. <laughs> he's not going to be invited to the table. But if you get to the table, then people get to know who you really are and what you bring when you get there. Wow. Yes, yes. Wow. But like, That's a great point. But like I said, you got to get to the table. That's right. And if they see you acting up, Philip, across the street, when you make it across the other side, they're going to say, see, we saw him already. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I, you know, but I know our time is just about up, but I did want to share some final mm-hmm. thoughts that you asked me to think about. Yes. And I have these these four five key things that I want to share with you. Okay. okay. One is that you have to be ready to go the distance. You got to put out energy sometimes that you didn't even know you had. You have to stay up late, get up early, but you got to take care of yourself. But sometimes you just have to go the distance. Okay. Yeah. Self discipline. What can I, you know what self-discipline is. Right, Somebody invites right. you to something, but you know you got that report to do, that grant the right, the letter the right. You, mm-hmm. Sometimes you just have to say, no, I, I can't do it. I have to do this and take care of myself. So self-discipline, go the distance. Be smart about your finances. Yeah. You make a, a financial sacrifice because it's going to take a lot, maybe a lot more than you think. No like if I knew then what I knew now, yeah. how marketing Cost and, and that investment that should be made to build your brand that mm-hmm. could have saved me a lot of time, money, and, and worry. I should mm-hmm. say a heartache. So mm-hmm. be smart with your finances. You need a good A team that those people that's going to back you and support you, a mentor, a role model, a that's coach, right. you know, mm-hmm. and someone just going to kind of hold you, your feet to the fire. Mm-hmm. And then, yes. above all, above all, above all, you, you need God on your side. If you're a person of faith, as I am, so however you perceive your higher power to be, having that faith and that higher power to lean on when nothing else makes sense, that's mm-hmm. what's going to get you through. 
Wow. Yes. I wow. love it. Yes. I love it. I love it. I Great love points. it. Great point. One final question that I do have in this world yes. of social media. Yes. <laughs> yes. And uh, what are some etiquette tips or suggestions yeah. in regards to social media and everything mm. out there or its mm-hmm. impact? Can you just, just kind of share mm-hmm. a little bit about <laughs> how that can impact you? Yeah, just, as your, yeah. <laughs> well, just because it's your personal page don't mean it can't be shared. So watch what you say and how you say it. You know, Christian people using uh, God and GD in the same sentence. You know, what are you saying? You're using profanity and mm-hmm. on social media. It's going to get seen somewhere along the line. And That's I right. try to tell young people, delete doesn't really mean delete. And somebody's job, when you're looking for a job, a contract or an association, is to find out what's on your social media. So if you've compromised yourself, it could cost you not to get a job or not to get an opportunity. So watch what you say. Um, It could affect your family relationships and your professional relationships and friendships as well. What you say, how you say it, how you put people on blast. Just have the conversation face to face. Yes, that's well. All not right. this time in real time. <laughs> <laughs> so, Julia, how can people contact you for your services? All right. Well, they can contact me through my website uh, on my contact page. That is www.ms.excuse me, mannersonmemorable.com. So, manners on memorable is my okay. tagline. My okay. email address is ms ms dot j at manners are memorable all spelled out dot com mm-hmm. on facebook excuse me on um linkedin it's julia yeah. mitchell you can find me by my name i okay. thought i had typed it in there i don't see it but it's juliet mitchell Juliet, you can mitchell. find me there as well okay great and you can always call the porters they know That's how right. to find right. you right. <laughs> we'll we'll share it. We'll yes. definitely share yes, it yes so, Juliet, uh, thank you, thank, thank you, you very much for being with uh, Conversations with Visionaries. Okay. And even though we've been knowing you, I learned a little bit more. I was been inspired today about uh, what you shared with us. And we just hopefully we just know this has inspired someone else. Yes. Someone else. Well, has. I hope so. And thank you for entrusting me with your audience. This has been a wonderful opportunity because the more we are able to talk about what we do, we actually said, am I really doing that? Is this what I still want to do? And is it making a difference? And my answer tonight is yes, it is. And thank yeah. you very much. Oh, well, you're right. welcome. Thank you, Juliet. All right. Thank All right. you. Have a good evening. Sure. Goodbye, everyone. And call me if you need me. <laughs> Man, right. Manners are memorable. Yes. All right. Amen. All right. Signing off. All right. All right. All right. Great. Great time with Miss Juliet oh, Mitchell. Thank you, Juliet. It was yeah. great, great, great uh, having you uh, on Conversation with Visionaries. And now, uh, as we're ready to close out, we do have a few announcements, okay? And uh, a first announcement is from uh, the Vision Driven Family Institute, and it says, uh, studies conducted by Harvard University, Stanford Research Center, Stanford Research Center, and Carnegie Foundation reveal that 85% of job success is based on soft skills, while only 15% is based on technical skills. Mm -hmm. The Vision Driven Family Institute is seeking to connect with nonprofit and churches that help disadvantaged teens and young adults Mm -hmm. find and secure jobs. They're looking Mm -hmm. to help to connect with uh, nonprofits that assist veterans to find Mm -hmm. jobs and helping them with that transition. Yes. And also corporations and small businesses and colleges that provide career or staff development training for their employees and might be interested in providing that some of that training online. Mm-hmm. All right. And to learn more about the Vision Driven Family Institute, you can contact them at their website, visiondrivenfamily.org, yes. or you can email them at visiondrivenfamily at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Okay. The next announcement we want to share is since we are HBCU graduates, and I guess today Juliet is as well. 
Yes. Uh, the upcoming HBCU uh, football classics. Yes. And some dates on those, some of the upcoming games. On Saturday, August 31st, it's going to be the 21st annual John A. Merritt Classic. And that's with Mississippi Valley State versus Tennessee State. And it's going to be in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And on Sunday, September 1st, the MEAC and SWAT Challenge in Atlanta, Georgia. And it's going to be Bethune Cookman representing the MEAC, which is the I conference. And then versus Jackson State University representing the SWAT. The SWAT, which is <laughs> my college, HBCU, Jackson State. All righty. And then the last one kind of coming up here is on Saturday, September 7th, the Labor Day Classic, uh, Tuskegee University versus Alabama State. Mm -hmm. Okay. So watch those and support those, uh, support those, uh, support those games. And yes. lastly, we just want to share uh, maybe an upcoming family holiday. Mm -hmm. And on Sunday, September 8th, is National Grandparents Day. Yes, National Grandparents National Day. National Grandparents Day. So mm -hmm. those of you who still have your grandparents with you and among you, time to take time to say, I love you. Mm -hmm. On right. National Grandparents Day. Yes. Grandparents okay. are extremely important in our children's lives. Okay. So, yes. So, very, very, very important. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Dr. Yes. Porter, have you yes. last uh, few words for, uh, for us for tonight? Well, again, I'm so grateful that Julia and Mitchell uh, made time to be our guests on the show. Remember, manners are memorable. I want to end with a quote from Nelson Mandela. It is better to lead from behind and to put others in front, especially when you celebrate victory when nice things occur. You take the front line when there's danger, okay. then people will appreciate your leadership. And that's from Nelson Mandela. Thank you again for joining us. All righty. So thank you once again, everyone, for joining us. Conversations, Conversations with, with Visionaries. visionaries where you will learn, learn more, more, lead more, and, and succeed more. more. Thank uh, you. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Okay. Mm -hmm.